last week, Jason Belmonte dominated the first major of the season, the PBA Players Championship. Adds to his legacy. And now Belmo is once again a threat, trying to take home the 15th major victory of his career here at the U.S. Open. But the Open is one of bowling's toughest tests, where today some of Belmo's fiercest rivals await. The 2022 U.S. Open, next on Fox Sports. Jason Belmonte could claim his second Super Slam. Two seed Anthony Simonson could be the youngest to win three majors. And E.J. Tackett, your one seed, could become the sport's eighth triple crown winner. $100,000 payday for a winner. Sold out crowd here in Indy. Listen to this. Man, so good to have the fans back here on the PBA Tour. So glad you're with us at home. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. Let's start with a future Hall of Famer. Jason Belmonte is the best bowler on the planet again. 2021, off year, shortened year. He has come back into 2022 throwing and landing haymakers, my friend. Uh, he really has. I mean, no ring rust on him whatsoever. And he told us typically, Rob, it takes him a little bit of time when he comes over from Oz with the jet lag getting acclimated to the United States, but well, not in 2022. What does he do at the Players' Championship? Well, in the West region, he runs the step ladder to get to the championship, and then he dismantles Sean Rash for his 14th I'm sorry, 14th major. 14th major. He goes for his 15th major and second of the season yeah. coming up next, but he's going to have to get through a gauntlet of talent, including your one seed, EJ Tackett, who has just put out a dominating performance this week. Yeah, he really has, and I, I, I mean, he led by over 500, but you take Take a look at this graphic. It's going to show the, the biggest leaders in the history of the U.S. Open and what they did. Butcher twice, Earl twice, Walter Ray, and they all had one thing in common. They all finished second. And don't sleep on our two seed, Anthony Simonson. You, yeah, don't ever sleep on Anthony Simonson. You got to keep all eyes on him. He was the youngest player to ever win a major, and then the youngest to win two majors. Anthony Simonson, you never want to take your eyes off of that guy. He's got all the game that's needed to win major championships. Take a look at your stepladder final. We start with our five versus four matchup. El Monte taking on Jake Peters. Wonderful story about Jake Peters. We'll get to that in a moment. A.J. Johnson sitting there in match number two. E.J. Tackett, your one seed waiting in the championship match. Bowling out of Orange 10-pin bowl in Orange, New South Wales, Australia. 2020 U.S. Open champion, Jason Belmonte. Well, we talked so much about Jason Belmonte and what he did last week, but here he is making the 3 6 9 10 to win another major, and that was his first U.S. Open. Now looking for his second and some more hardware. And another green jacket. This is his fifth U.S. Open final show, third in 2012, second in 2013, fourth in 2019, won it all in 2020. Wow, going with the real soft speed and the urethane ball. Spare shooting, particularly single spare shooting, has been paramount here. See that four pin left, EJ Tackett, 23 of 23 on four pin conversions this week. We've been saying it for weeks, if not years, Randy, gotta make your spares, cash those checks. Especially this week at the US Open. He rolls out of GameWorks in Las Vegas, Nevada, winner of the 2013 Lucas Oil Badger Open, Jake Peters. Well, tragedy has fueled this man after losing his wife, Melissa, last May. He's making back-to-back -back telecasts for the first time in his career, and he gives all the credit to Mel. 
as she continues to be his driving force. And it's the second time we've seen Jake Peters this season. He's got his father and stepmom in the crowd. The number two seed in the West Regional down in Texas a couple weeks ago, lost in the semis to Manny. Faces today, Jason Belmonte and oh. Wow. Both start by leaving the four pin. Similar hits for both players. You can see Jake Speed right up there at the top of the screen, 18.7, so he's going a little bit faster. He's using a maximum results, so he's going with reactive resin, so he'll have to throw it a little bit faster. Said he drilled five new balls just last night. Needs that extra one or two strikes to get himself past a guy like Jason Belmonte. Well, what was interesting is that he used urethane th throughout the entire match play portion of this event, 24 games. And now he went out and drilled five reactive balls for tonight. Is that the move you would have done? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would probably dance with the one I brung. You know what I mean? I think it's a great idea to have backup, you know, in case the lanes are a little bit different. Remember, these lanes haven't been touched all week. There's the arsenal for Jake Peters. Yeah, maximum results. So pretty strong. Just 6, 9, 10 standing. Now, this is not the start he envisioned for sure. He was telling us just this morning, if I don't bowl well, if I don't perform well, I have no chance to win against a guy of the caliber of Jason Belmonte. Oh. A pair of opening uh, spares for Jake. Yeah, I mean, not just him, but anyone. But, you know, his, his really his thought process coming in tonight was that he had to slow everything down. Remember how fast he said uh, a couple weeks ago went the for TV him? show. Said it was over in like two minutes. There's Jason Belmonte's arsenal. He's using a pitch black, and that's urethane. And this is probably the softest or slowest speed I've ever seen him throw it at. He gets the base pumping in this place, huh? Well, this is pattern four. They used four different patterns throughout this event. It's 40 feet in length, and you can see just how sensitive it is. Jake Peters playing a little bit farther out. Belmonte is bellowing a little bit, and then that last red arrow, that's the way EJ Tack had played him all week. It's the same oil they use throughout the course of match play as well. Yeah, cashers round and match play. Belmo up three. Bartender. Make it a double. Sir, would you like a double at half price? Yes, please. Hundred and eight started this competition earlier this week here in Indy. Cut went from 36 to 24, and here we are with your top five in the stepladder finals. E.J. Tackett, your number one seed. Anthony Simonson, two. A.J. Johnson, your three seed. This is our four versus five matchup. Yeah. All right, Jake gets his first strike. It's like he found that pace, found that, that right rhythm, that right speed. You know, Randy, we're talking about trying to slow things down. And you notice that by the, the way he walked back up from that shot? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that's how you build in rhythm. It's like you don't want to walk to the foul line slow and then walk back fast, right? You want that pace. You want that song running through your head that's, that's just the right pace, the right rhythm. Back-to-back -back jacks for both Belmo and Peters. 
Rose here. Wow, that ball came all the way back from Kokomo. Check this one out. Another half inch to the right, and I don't believe it gets back to the head pin. They're real slick on the outside part of the lane. It's a lot of trust. A lot of trust out there. Oh, three in a row. A little late drop there. I mean, this house is rocking right oh, now. I was just about to say the same thing. How good this crowd is in Indianapolis. Belmo loves it here in Indy. This is his fifth career televised stepladder final in this city. You know, you go down to the end of the, of the building, like we're looking at Belmonte here. If you go to the right and go all the way down, there's this awesome sports bar. And hanging in that sports bar are the banners of every champion they've ever had here. My buddy Ron Palumbi Jr. has got two banners. Weber's got a couple banners. You know who else has a banner hanging there? That guy. He's looking to make it two today. I, I was kind of thinking more of this guy. Has oh, a, you. Has you. a banner there. Yeah. Uh, oh, you do? Yeah. Thanks. You bold? <sighs> yeah. Once or twice. What did you win here again? It was just, a, I believe it was just the Indy Open. I beat, just the Indy Open. I beat, I Try beat, to sell it better. Uh, it, was, it was the uh, it was the Ferrari Open. <laughs> Takes that one into the pits, and that breaks a string of three straight strikes for Domo. Second ever major appearance for Jake. His first was in Vegas, where he lived, so he had a great crowd of family there and kids that he coached. Three in a row for Jakey. Gonna take a re-rack on that left lane. I like that because it just keeps him in the moment, slows everything down. Buys him a little more time. Great touch on this shot. He's playing a part of the lane where I don't think any of the other players are going to be at. I don't think any of the players will be that far right. Is that bass or in the background is it, or is that my heart? <laughs> it might be both. You can feel it through your body, that bass. I mean, it is the U.S. Open. Second event of the season, second major of this PBA season. Ooh, uh, through the nose on that one. It was close. Watch this, drifts just a pinch high, almost gets the left tap on the four pin. Always said a right-hander's best friend was a trip four. Mine, mine was always kicking the week 10 out. See these spare stats, they're calculated by our partners at Lane Talk. <laughs> Takes care of the four pin. Gets himself a spare. Everybody clean so far here in match one. And coming up next, why this has been an extra emotional weekend for that man, Jake Peters. PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Get cash out of your home's equity with a cash out refi from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. And by Kia and the new Forte GT. It's one fantastic ride. And by the BPAA. The USBC and BPAA are working together to build a future for the sport of bowling at all levels. Visit BPAA.com today to find out more. We have been saying all season long, you bring your signs out, we're putting you on television, right? Absolutely.
Absolutely. And they are bringing it today in Indy. Love the energy. Oh, yeah. There, where, where, where's the nephew? Oh, who is that handsome blonde devil? Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, that is a knowing nod, the man behind the pad. <laughs> oh, Randall Peterson, so good. Oh, he's still behind oh, you. that's awesome. He's right behind Belmo. Oh, my goodness. I love it when the fans <laughs> bring, their, bring their signs out. He brought an iPad with a sign. Oh, that's next level sign that making, man. That is next man. level. That's varsity. Get him a jacket. No. Oh, get oh. down! Get down in your home! Strike number four for Belmo. Watch this. Unamused after the fact. Unamused? He was. Look at his facial expression after he trips his forepin. Well, you know he got bailed out. In the most unusual way, too. Look at this. Mm, I'll okay. take it. I'll take it. At least the pins know who I am. That's right. Well, they know who he is here in Indy, man. Kind of a slow start here. For his standards, right? Got 11. Another strike to back to back jacks for Belmo. That was a beauty, and that's what great champions do. They take advantage of breaks given to them. I mean, he aces that one. You have to get breaks. You know, you know, you don't pull 300 not getting a break. So, mm -hmm. I mean, winning major championships, you have to have stuff go your way. Jake down 13. Look out. I told you they were slick out there. Oh boy. This is makeable, but this is going to be some heavy lifting here. All right, Jake, what do you got here, kid? Well, he's, he's, you can see how far right it was right there, but he's going to try to get the ball over into the, the left side of the head pin, cut that over into the 10, and the ball will take out these two right here. Converted 32% of the time on the tour. Again, those spare stats calculated by our great partners at Lane Talk. Oh! Just missed the 10. And an open frame and a massive opening for the world's best, Jason Belmonte. It's been one heck of a weekend for Jake Peters. See the picture there of his late wife who died tragically at the age of 35 due to breast cancer. She would have been 35 years old on Saturday. And Jake telling us today he was supposed to be in Wichita yesterday for a gravesite memorial. Instead, he's here bowling. Come on. Had a great outing there, family coming by, singing, balloons, drinks. But it's really been the wife who's been honoring Jake this season. You know, he, he's been struggling, and every time there's a struggle in his game, he feels that Melissa's there, you know, helping her up, yeah. boosting her at some, some point. She's probably slowing him down, showing him that patience here against Jason Belmont who cleans that one up. He basically says she's his daily inspiration. I mean, can you even imagine? I can't imagine doing any job coming off something like that. And yeah, then, no. And then something like this that is such a ground and grind and such kind of a solo affair. Right. Uh, we got a lot of respect for him. Yep. As does the entire tour. I mean, one of the most liked human beings on the PBA tour. He's a wonderful man. Steve Nagy, Sportsmanship Award winner. And a no-brainer. He was the only one nominated. Yep. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah, he knows it too, right? That was that was a bit of a dagger. That's the look of I'm gonna kick your butt. Yep. I like you, Jake. However. Look at the look at mm. Jake's. Did you see the Jake's Jake had his eyes closed after that hit? It was almost like the dagger. Yeah. Belmo burns a re-rack. Both have one left. You see those slash marks underneath their names. That's how many re-racks they have and have left. Both allowed two. Belmo and Peters have burned one. 
Jason loves using these ray racks, right? Nice little calculated timeout. Pause things. Yep. Also let his opposition know. Yeah, there's a thing about managing your game, right? Mm -hmm. Much over now after this hit. Four bagger for Belmo. May have iced it. Got it to that spot again, Rob, and it's just too far to the right. His execution last couple frames has not been good. His best major final, a third place finish at the 2019 USBC Masters here in Indy. It's looking more and more like this will be a fifth place finish here at the US Open. I got a, a fun fact Ooh. about Jake, if you want to hear it. I would love to. So round two was the flat oil pattern, which means it's the most difficult. Mm -hmm. He threw a plastic ball for eight games. The plastic balls don't hook. They use them for spares. And so what he did was he lined up to hit the one three pocket every ball. Which is pretty much what I do when I show up well, at the bowling center. Yeah, in effect, but if you think about it, while other players are shooting, Norm shot 120 right. that, that block and missed the cut by 11 pins. Yeah. Norm Duke. You're saying like Jake put his pride away and just said, give me the plastic He's, and give he me said, the high heat? Ab absolutely. He said, I'm going to avoid disasters, no bad yeah. games. Yeah, let me just get through it. And let me just get through this. Good strategy. <laughs> Takes care of the seven pin. So a spare for Jake. Last shot coming up for him here. so much the neutrals are the neutrals are cheering for you Jake we're all cheering for you Belmo getting nine on his first shot there in the 10th lead at 50 so he will move on to take on your three seed AJ Johnson we talk about a guy who's due for a win that would be A.J. Johnson, 29-year-old, eighth year on the tour, zero tour titles. Kicks that one in. We're going to hear from Belmo in just a moment. A little ball change here, reconnaissance mission for Belmo. Peterson down on the floor. No Kimberly Pressler with us this week. Kimberly back home in California. Kimberly, hope you get better quickly, my friend. We miss you here, but Belmo gets the 246. 198 win. And your five seed moves on. Standing by with Randy. Jason, what an opening match right there against Jake Peters. Your focus looks off the chart. How are you getting to that point mentally? Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just, uh, I've got a few things that I'm really focusing on and that's all that's in my head at the moment. So, um, which is difficult because this crowd is bloody loud today. So. They're awesome, aren't they? Aren't they great? But mate, once that uh, scoreboard clears and it's my name and it's my turn to go, uh, my job is to hit that little target I'm looking at and 
let it go the way that I did just then, and it's going to be a tough match for AJ. You, you looked at a couple different balls there in the 10th frame. What's the strategy going, going into the next game? Those were um, plan B and C. So we'll stick with plan A until that's done. And now at least I have uh, somewhat of an idea of what those two bowling balls are going to do. All right, thanks for your time. Good luck. Appreciate it. So plan A continues in front of this bloody loud crowd, but he's got that man, your two seed or your three seed, A.J. Johnson, coming up next. Jason Belmonte with seven strikes moves him on to take on the three seed, A.J. Johnson. And coming up, the 10th anniversary of maybe the most memorable moment in PBA history. This is the 10th anniversary of the 2012 U.S. Open, North Brunswick, New Jersey, the year that the legendary Pete Weber squared off against your top seed, Mike Fagan, trying to win his fifth U.S. Open title, surpassing the record held by his late father, Dick Weber. I love that man so much. <laughs> I mean, his energy, the fire that he's got, and nobody's won more U.S. Open titles than Pete Weber. There's the list of people who have won multiple U.S. Opens. Jason Belmonte with an opportunity to do just that. Who do you think you are, Randy Peterson? <laughs> I am. I mean, I remember that show like it was yesterday. He had to climb the, the step ladder all the way from the bottom. Every match came down to the 10th frame. And then that against Mike Fagan, he got nine on the first ball, spared it, and he needed all 10 to win by one. By the way, how do you think PDW would do with this crowd behind us he would, today? Oh, he'd be, he'd, oh my gosh. He'd, he'd, he'd be digging. He'd be handing sunglasses out. Yeah. You know, he'd be in his full glory. Uh, he's one of the best, PDW. You're always in our hearts and our head. Uh, Jason Belmonte, always seemingly on the top of that leaderboard. What would you think of his performance there in that last game? It was near perfection. Uh, he, the only reason why he only shot 246 is because he experimented in the 10th yeah. frame. Um, he's going to stick with the urethane ball. The question is, how long can he stay in it? Seven strikes, had a four-bagger, had a three-bagger as well. Got the cruise control win, if you yep. will, in the opening match. Now it's on to the three seed, the athletic A.J. Johnson. And A.J. yet to win a tour title. We said it a couple weeks ago. This guy is due, and his style suits, suits this, these lanes pretty well. Well, you know, he's a different guy now. And a lot of that has to do with Coach Mark Baker. Um, A.J. Johnson, in our interviews, isn't the same guy, and it's all mental. Yeah, we'll talk more about Mark Baker's impact on A.J. Johnson as he discusses some strategy here. Our coverage of the U.S. Open on FS1 continues. It's A.J. Johnson taking on Jason Belmonte next. We welcome you back to our live coverage of the 2022 U.S. Open. Coming your way from Royal Pin Entertainment, Woodland in Indianapolis. This is the 36th PBA event held here at this facility. We take a look at your current Kia playoff standings entering today's final round of the U.S. Open. Majors earn double points. Today's participants highlighted in yellow. Belmo on top of the playoff points list. Our number one seat today, E.J. Tackett sitting there in second. Tom Doherty in 12th with Sam Cooley. Grandpa, the man just above the cut line and the big nasty, the Hall of Famer. Wes Malott sitting on the south side of the line. Belmo set to start off match number two. Interesting, A.J. Johnson gets choice of starting lane. Belmont is going to start this match exactly the same way he started the last. <laughs> Boy, that was like a Sunday stroll to get there. That looked like it was pretty far left of where he's been playing. Four, six, seven, ten to start. Takes care of the left side. Open frame for Belmo. Bowling out of both Fox Bowl in Wheaton, Illinois, and Parkside Lanes in Aurora, Illinois. Three-time Midwest Region Player of the Year, A.J. Johnson.
A.J. Johnson is looking for his first career win, and what a win it would be here at the U.S. Open at historic Woodland Bowl. He's been a different player in 2022, and it's all been mental, thanks to his coach, Mark Baker. Did not like it. Trying to shake that one off. Well, judging by the spot where the ball ended up, I would have to say that was way left of target, crossing over to the Brooklyn side. I like his shirt, it's kind of styling. Yeah. Right? Styling on it. Styling, profiling. Fills, he fills that jersey out as well. There's mom, Judy, dad, Sean. He's got this sense of calmness now to his game, which is kind of new to it. It's no longer this urgent helter skelter. It's kind of that piece. He's got such a quiet shot. He gets all 10 to drop there. But he's got that look, Randy, of, hmm, hmm. I got some question marks still. Well, he's using a venom shock on both lanes, and here's why he's questioning what's happening. First ball goes Brooklyn. Next ball, he gets it to the zone, and it goes light, trips the 2-8 out. I'd have questions, too. That's not what you want to see. Belmo, open frame in the first. There we go. Normalcy has returned to the world. The world has been righted back onto its correct axis. Everything will be okay. Now, I'm being told by Strike Track that the first shot he threw on the left lane was just really, really slow. To me, it looked like it was a bit inside as well. And it is Strike, pa strike Track powered by Kia. Love having Kia on board. Oh, we have. We have some great sponsors. I got to get me one of them Tellurides. Have you been in those yet? Yeah. How about, uh, I mean, I'm serious. I need to get a Telluride. Well, get one. You're rich. I'm, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. Come on, Belmo. There we go. Two in a row after that open frame in the first. Nice little comeback. I see the last shot on that lane was left of that seven and a half board that you see on strike or that you saw on strike track and a pinch faster. Belmo takes a seat. AJ Johnson. Talking about how he wants to find that spot exploited as long as he can and he just can't find that spot yet left or right lane. Well, it seems like if he's going to open the lane up that much his speed has to be softer to give the ball time to come around the corner. Hence what Belmo is doing, and we're seeing that slow speed from him. Well, it, yes, different but, styles, I understand. But different equipment. Mm -hmm. it, two, he's going to try to cut that two pin. Sorry about that. I got late to the to the telly. He's just going to try to cut it over into the ten, and he misses it. So both with an open frame now. So two different game plans. One is really trying to open the lane up, but he's throwing reactive resin, a much stronger bowling ball. Belmonte is trying to open the lane up a little bit, but he's doing it with urethane, and so he has to keep his speed softer. There's the arsenal for AJ today. Yeah, Venom Shock is what he's using right now. Just to give you an idea, Belmonte's three miles an hour slower than A.J. Johnson. That's a lot. That's the difference between a fastball and a changeup. That was his first shot that looked right. Yeah. Belmo, six-time PBA Player of the Year. He is your very early, early leader. 
to win it for a seventh time. That's what happens when you win the first event, and it's a major. And the second event is a major on the TV show, and you get three in a row. Visit PBA.com to check out officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise. Items include hats, T-shirts, custom jerseys, including replica jerseys of the stars here on the PBA Tour. Head on over to PBA.com. Click on the Shop PBA link to get shopping. i got to get me some gear. I'm a little low on PBA gear. I guarantee you there is a Rob Stone discount code lying around somewhere. <laughs> It's the beer frame, sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Grabs a Pabst today, and please drink responsibly. Once again, a look at your beer frame here, brought to you by Pabst Blue Ribbon. So four in a row now. Last two shots on that left lane for Belmonte were identical. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, my man. So I want to hear you yell crack up in a second. There you go, AJ. Two in a row for Johnson. Yeah, the time is now. I love that sign. The time is now for AJ. And part of the reason that he believes it, those fans believe it, is his work with the legendary Mark Baker. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, AJ told us himself, yeah, I went over there and Worked with him for like three days, and every day we'd work on my physical game for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Meaning? <laughs> Between the years. The problem, the problem is connecting the top half with the bottom half. Three in a row for AJ. He's got Mo back. Sluggish start through three, and then three straight. Strikes. We got a tight one here in match number two at the 78th edition of the U.S. Open. A.J. Johnson, Jason Belmonte, wrap it up next. Ah, fantastic crowd here in Indianapolis. I believe the phrase was bloody loud crowd from Mr. Belmonte when you interviewed him earlier. Yes. Belmo up 10. Working on four in a row can extend the lead to 20. Winner to take on your two seed, Anthony Simonson. Sorry guys, there's a rock on the approach. I don't know what that is. Tape? Any little bit will throw off a bowler here. And now it erupts. And that delay did not do him any favors. Into the nose of that rack. Yeah, big miss left there for Belmonte. He's been so good. And all of a sudden, out of the commercial break goes high. And, and like I say, just about every week, every shot makes somebody happy. And mm -hmm. that just made A.J. Johnson really, really happy. 80% of the time on the tour, the 3-6-10 cleaned up. Again, those spare stats calculated by the partners. Cat lane talk and another open frame for Jason. He started this match with one, and he gets another here in the sixth. Boy, that is tough to come back from. You want to pay the 3-6-10 a lot of respect, just like the 2-4-7 for left, left handers. And you saw him just chop the 10. Excuse me, chop the 3 6 off of the 10. All right, so let's see how the players are playing 
this pattern. You can see Belmonte is the red ball. It's so much slower than A.J. Johnson. And, and then big different numbers when it comes to arrow positioning and launch position. Strike track again, powered by Kia. Belmo to open up the seventh. Back on the strike tree. And a bit of a stare down at that rack. Opening for A.J. Johnson, and he knows it. A.J. Johnson working on three in a row, and take a, a, one more look at the last strike by Belmonte as he kind of parts the Red Sea, if you will. Red O pattern, Red Sea, I just thought it kind of went together. Just kind of can opens that rack, but A.J. Johnson is in a terrific position right here working on three in a row. that one either his head went down immediately I don't know if it was his slide foot hey I couldn't tell I mean the footing looked good yeah that was left of target he's lucky to just leave the three six maybe he thought he had a violation Things that one up Boy, Rob, that was his time. I mean, that was his time to shine right there. 100%. He knows it. Lead at three. Now, Belmo can win this one, striking out. Three six ten, and this is what Jason could not clean up in the sixth frame. And you can see the red line left of the blue one. Blue line indicates the last strike he threw on that left lane, and that was well inside. And now he leaves himself with three six ten. <laughs> Missed it. Well, it came back just enough. I thought he was going to whiff the three pin. But guess what? We're all even now. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And he knows he had that opening. He knows Jason gave him a chance. He was unable to capitalize. And now Belmo realizing, OK, maybe I gave this one away. Mm -mm. I got it in my hands right now. Things even, but Belmo working off a strike. Doesn't have a spare in this game. Can you believe that? Crazy. Two open frames. Five strikes. Make wow. it six. Steps up there after going through the nose and missing the 3 6 10. Comes back with a strike on the left lane and then this one right here. I mean, just cooler than a polar bear's feet as he steps up in the ninth frame. Nothing A.J. Johnson can do at this point to stop Jason Belmonte. It's his to win. Jason just using a re-rack there. Go back to yesterday, Randy. He was, what, 175 back with four games left? Yeah. He said, I f <laughs> he said, if you're close, you can still be so far away. He felt really close was crunching the pocket, but couldn't get a string of strikes together. And then he found his rhythm. And he's in rhythm right now. Boom! Three in a row! You want to know why that shot right there was so important? Because if he didn't strike on that ball, A.J. Johnson could have struck out and shut him out. He is fun to watch, huh? Uh, this is an athlete in his prime. There's been so much goat talk lately, right? You are watching a goat that is not ready to hang it up. Down 20. AJ needs something. And he gets it. 
but he strikes out. He shoots 223. You can see the max score for Belmonte right there. Yeah, he'll go through a re-rack as well as we take another look at that strike. What'd you call this red oil pattern? Sunday Bloody Sunday? No. Hang on. It was so good, too. I'll tell you in a second. What I called it? Yeah. I think you're giving, giving me credit that belongs oh, somewhere else. Was it Mike J? Rivers of blood at the open. Ooh. You got to pay this pattern respect. You can't just throw it all over the building. The sewers run red with Burgundy's blood. Great reference. All right, oh, so yeah. two more strikes for A.J. Johnson, and he will force Bill Monty to strike on the first ball in the 10th frame. Six total strikes for A.J., including the last two frames. Both players out of re -racks. We've been saying this for a while, and I know AJ doesn't want to hear it. I know his family don't want to hear it, but probably the best bowler out there without a tour title, AJ Johnson. It's very possible. Maybe the biggest moment of his career right here. That was a pretty good shot. It looked like he was going to get lucky enough to carry that light mixer and just didn't get the seven. His best career major finish, he was second at the 2015 USBC Masters. Looks like he'll finish fourth here. Belmonte just needs a mark. AJ cleans that one up. Yeah, punch to the fist in frustration. I know AJ doesn't want to hear it, and I said it a couple weeks ago. It's coming, kid. It'll be there. It'll be there soon for you. I, I definitely think that he's on a, a more righteous path now, don't you? 100%. Just needs a mark to move on in his quest for another super slam. We'll continue. Just got to cover it. We have seen issues covering the 10 pin this season. Needs to make this and get one. I think he can handle the one. your spare of the game brought to you by guaranteed rate if you believe it you can do it guaranteed rate believe you will and believe that your five seed has now won two straight matches and he moves on to match number three to meet anthony simonson yeah those two guys have a bit of a history in majors Even yeah. fight. Keep it going, man. Good luck the rest of the way, all right? Hang in there, AJ Johnson. We're cheering for you, but it's Jason Belmonte moving on to the semis here at the 78th edition of the U.S. Open. So Belbo moves on by nine pins. That's who's waiting for him. Your two seed, Anthony Simonson. Welcome back to the PBA on FS1, the 2022 U.S. Open. 
sell-out crowd here at Royal Penn Entertainment, Woodland in Indianapolis. 36th PBA event held at this facility. Terry, we were wish we wish you were here as well. Take a look at your updated stepladder bracket, and it's all about the five seed. Jason Belmonte, a 48-pin win. And then a nine-pin survival against AJ Johnson. Up next, your two seed, Anthony Simonson. Belmo once again will start. Jason Belmonte, big ball change now. He's going to jump way in the middle part of the lane with a reactive resin bowling ball. This could get real interesting. First time he started with the strike today. Opening match, it was a nine spare. Last match, an open frame. He rolls out of the nerd in Las Vegas, Nevada. He's a two-time PBA major champion, Anthony Simonson. Man, that facial fescue he's got going on is impressive. Simonson is looking to become the youngest player to ever win three majors. Take a look at his Masters win. He won a player's championship. He's a top five player out here and has been for years. One of the most talented players out here, whether it's one-handed or two. Yeah, baby! Let's go! Give me one! Let me get one! He's got some good energy to his game as well, yeah, right? He sure does. If he wins it, as you mentioned, he'll be the first to, or the youngest to win three majors at the age of 25 years and 31 days. The youngest to ever win three? <laughs> Dave Davis. Anthony fourth at the 2016 U.S. Open, third at the 19 U.S. Open, second in 2022. His opponent right now, Jason Belmonte, as you take a look at his arsenal. Both players using the same bowling ball, Wolverine. Just to start you on, and these two do have history together. Remember back in 2020, where they faced off and they bowled for two majors. Did Bill Monty and Simonson first the U.S. Open in Lincoln, and then the PBA World Championship in Vegas? Bill Monty got the better of Simonson in both of those. Six and four all-time in TV finals versus Simo. Oh, no, no. I mean, and that was going to be the issue, right? When he got out of that, that first game plan, get the ball over the left side of the head pin and cut it into the four, or excuse me, the 6'10", and, and then pray. <laughs> Overcut it by just a fraction. But again, that, that was kind of the issue, right? When I did the interview with Jason, I said, you know, so what's your game plan going in? And he says, well, the ball changes for a B and C plan. I'm going to stick with the A plan. Well, now he's in the B, and who knows if he's going to get into the C. He had two open frames last match, able to survive it, get a 221 to win. Think about how drastic the two lines are, right? I mean, he's a good, how many boards left now? 15 to 18 boards left. And then just sending it out to that same spot with reactive resin, he's really using almost the entire lane surface. Yeah. 
So strike, open frame, nine spare to start for Belmo. Simonson has been nothing but strikes. Your five seed in an early hole. Already up 22. Oh. Yeah. Handed it. Yeah, at the release. I mean, this deep inside line that A.J. Johnson played, that Simonson's playing, and now that Belmo, it's a little scary. Missed it! 94% like of the time, that is cleaned up on the tour. Uh, and all of a sudden, that water tastes a little bit better. Left the 10. Chops the six straight back, and... Gives a little opening to Belmonte. He's still leading by eight. Mm. Messenger jumped off the cliff and wanted no part of that 10. See, and, and that's the other thing. That's so much angle being created that if the ball doesn't get there the right way, you start leaving corner pins. And that's what happened on that shot right there. Hard to believe what he's done at age 25. He's got a great career ahead of him, but he's already thinking about what that next step is going to be. Talking to us today about, you know, I, I want to own a center. He's got his eye on one in Texas yeah. right now, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a hard worker. And, um, and he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. How about that story he was telling us? About putting, putting away 3,000 bowling balls the other day. Yeah. Belmo drops it. And not only is he, is he putting away 3,000 bowling balls last week, he is hand delivering today's opponent. <laughs> Was it six or nine balls last week? Nine. Tomorrow, Pac 12 rivalry heats up. It's the duel in the desert. Number seven, Arizona, taking on Arizona State here on FS1, 9 Eastern. So Belmo had ordered some balls. Anthony Simonson was supposed to deliver them, or, well, or at least put them in the, he the was, mail. He was supposed to ship them yeah. to Dallas after the Western Regional. Right. And Simon, he just got too busy. Got kind got of. Got home late on a Monday. Yeah. Tuesday was like a 10, 11 hour work day. Oh, oh no! Get down! Oh, the Medusa 9. Stares you into stone. The stone nine. So, Anthony notices, oh boy, this is going to cost a lot to get these balls to him. Yeah. What does he do? He burns some frequent flyer miles. Flies down to Dallas. Rolls into the center. Drops them off. Turns around, essentially heads home. Yeah. Good work ethic. Well, by the time it got to where, well, if I send them in tomorrow and to get there by Friday, it's going to cost like over $1,000. Right. See that position 12, it was his worst block, obviously, of the week. And he came back in round three and crushed him. Seven oh, my goodness. Oh, this sport can be cruel. Think about how costly that solid nine was for Jason Belmonte on the left lane as Samo leaves the 7-10 right behind it. Remember, Anthony started with a pair of strikes, always right in the world. And then an open frame, then a nine spare, and now another open frame. And he's down five. He's got to get himself back in the right place. Just what he needed. Oh, it's 
been a slug fest here in our semis. Belmo, the five seed. Simonson, the two seed. We wrap it up next here on FS1. The on-lane graphics you see today, including the ball tracer, courtesy of Clutch Bowling. Back to a rowdy house here in Indy. On the right, Chad Murphy, executive director of the USBC. Tom Clark in the glasses, the commissioner of the PBA. Always good to see those two gentlemen. You know if they're in the house, something important is happening. Yeah. I got a little nugget for you. You want it? I love, I love your nuggets. Belmonte has led coming out of commercial break in all three matches. And he almost went Brooklyn off the break. Yeah, he's kind of struggled out of these commercial breaks. Yeah, he's having trouble getting the ball online. He's playing so much angle. Six pin. Let's take a look at strike track powered by Kia. Yeah, this is how he played him in game two, and now here in game three, red ball was the urethane ball, and you can see just how much faster he's throwing the reaction, the reactive resin ball. Break points similar, if as you see right there, but look at the difference at the arrows and the laydown. Twelve boards different when he lets the ball go. Nine boards at the arrows, same break point. And he burned a re-rack. Back on track. This one a little lower scoring than you envisioned. This match, well, this match is, I, I thought as we progressed, especially after Belmonte used the urethane ball, that the scores would actually get a little bit better. He would drag some oil down the lane, players would have a little bit of hold. Uh, it really hasn't developed into that. Working on a strike is Simonson. Oh boy, uh, he is in trouble. See, and the, and the problem is that the players get it too far right, then it, it, the ball hangs, it hits that oil like Belmonte did in the second frame and left that big washout. So that's always kind of in the back of your mind, you know? It's like you get to, to the release point, and you're like, okay, don't miss too far right, and then you get it in just a little bit, and there's no hold, there's no hold or nothing to hold the ball on line. That's been an up and down qualifying for him, up and down match here as well, able to cover that one, so he avoids what could have been his third open frame here in the semis. Has just three strikes. The opening two, and then another one in the sixth. So we go to the eighth. Anthony can max out with a 213. He's down four. That was a great pickup right there with 369-10. Throwing a plastic ball at it perfectly. Just got done saying that. And that's why this pattern is so dirty. A little too far to the right, it does this, 210. A little too far left, it goes through the face. And that's why Belmonte started with Urethay. Another open frame. So EJ Tackett's our one seed. He's got the winner. What do you think he's saying as he's watching what's going on? I think this is exactly what he thought would happen. He's gonna probably play way in and do what he's done all week. Or at least he's gonna look at it in practice. Right lane is just on fire. Players can't get the ball 
to the right side of the head pin. He tried to go with a little loft here. He's inside a fifth arrow. Get in there! Takes care of the 3-6-10 this time. Had an issue with it earlier. It's getting ugly early. Yeah, this is... This is a challenge, man. This is kind of rock fighty. Can can please take my second re -rack? So Jason uses another re-rack right there. It's on the left lane now. Remember, he's going to have to finish the match on that right lane. Only three strikes in this game for Belmo. Two of them have come on the lane he's on right now, the left. Yep. I mean, that's amazing. Jason Belmonte with only three strikes. Yet he's up 17. Way right of target. Big miss right. Same thing Simonson did on that lane. Oh, this is scary territory right now. You almost feel like he's telling himself, hey, if I would have stayed with the urethane, I could have just grinded something out, right? Big moment. Big moment. Second open frame. Had one in the second. And has one in the foundation frame ninth. Ouch. One pin separating these two. After going 240-220, Jason Belmonte can only strike out for 181. You see the max scores right there. And look at this, Simonson going with a ball change here in the ninth frame. He's off an open frame in the eighth. Now you can see the name of the ball right there. Gets low, throws it in, and will only get nine. If he spares here, no matter what he does in the 10th frame, he can't shut out Belmonte. Belmonte has thrown three strikes. Two and, on the left lane, and, but he's going to the right. And only one on the right lane. What do you do? What adjustment do I make? Do I stay with the same ball? Do I change balls? What do I do? Simonson, I mean, that's gutsy, right? Ninth frame, he's like, hey, I got nothing to lose. I'm going to go for it. Have a re -rack, please. I think that's what you got to do when you're going against the best bowler on the planet, I, right? I agree. And, and I think the fact that neither of these players are afraid to do it. Well, they have confidence in their game. They have confidence in their reps. Confidence in their balls. They know what their equipment's going to do. Remember the last time up on this lane, he went 210. shot for Simonson. Again, trying to become the youngest to win three majors. That one had a pretty good touch to it. I mean, you got to think if he if he gets the next two, he's got a really good chance of moving on based on Belmonte's track record this game on that right lane. Clutch, that is huge oh, from Simonson. Is it his time for vindication? In 2020, losing back-to-back -back majors to Belmonte, he has a chance now to move on, but he can't shut Belmonte out. Needs this for a 180. Can't believe I'm saying that, right? Needs yep. a strike for a 180. You know why you're saying that? Because this is a US Open. Yeah.
shots for Belmo, all of them must strike situations. I'm not sure he can hit the pocket on this lane. When was the last time he hit the pocket? Frame what? Frame four. He got his lone strike in the fourth on this right lane. Open frame in the second, strike in the fourth, nine spare in the sixth, seven spare in the eighth. Must get a strike here. Way right, and it's done. Belmo eliminated, Simonson moves on. There will not be a 15th major for Jason Belmonte. There will not be another super slam. Strong run from that five seed hole, but boy, the lane's just too much here in match number three. Last shot of this US Open for Belmo. We love you, Belmo! I don't know if I've ever experienced a 168 from Jason Belmonte. Anthony Simonson wins it by 12, 180, 168. Great crowd support for Belmo here in Indy, but look who's moving on up. The guy who just crossed your screen, your one seed, EJ Tackett, is up next. And Randy, you remember what happened here in 1991? I don't. Uh-huh. Now, earlier we showed you Pete Weber winning his record fifth U.S. Open. 21 years before that, 1991, Pete captured his second U.S. Open here at Woodland in the trophy presentation, Randy. Um, That's right. Yeah, uh-huh. It was one for <laughs> the ages. That's right. Lift up the eagle and watch her fly. The eagle has landed. Oh, Pete's reaction. Yeah, the look on his face was priceless. Look, I, look, I didn't do that, did I? Wait, what do you, what do you want me, me to do? Uh, so Randy picked up the pieces, glued them together, and there you have the eagle has landed. It took a long time. Yeah. There's a it lot of pieces. Good. You did good work. Yeah. Green jacket and that beautiful U.S. Open trophy waiting to be handed out next. Will it be E.J. Tackett? Will it be Anthony Simonson? It's your one versus two matchup here at the 2022 U.S. Open. E.J. Tackett already two career major titles, trying to make it three, trying to become just the eighth to win the Triple Crown. It's our title match, uninterrupted, next. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Get cash out of your home's equity with a cash out refi from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. And by Kia in the new Forte GT. It's one fantastic ride. Anthony Simonson, your two seed, looking for his third major. Ditto for EJ Tackett, your one seed. The Hoosier State native looking for a green jacket today in Indy. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson here with you. Kimberly Pressler not with us this week under the weather. Kimberly, we're thinking about you. Can't wait to get you back out on the tour. Get well soon, Kimberly. How about this crowd we've had? Sold out, standing room only, and they have been standing for a majority of this one as well. Uninterrupted final $100,000 payday to your winner. EJ is going to make Anthony finish on the right lane. <laughs> Messenger, get down seven. Get yourself down. Bowling out of Easy Bowl in Bluffton, Indiana, former player of the year and two-time PBA major champion, E.J. Tackett.
Hey, Rob, you know who has Hall of Fame street creds at age 29? E.J. Tackett. Yes, he does. With a win today, he'll also complete the Triple Crown. That's winning the U.S. Open World Championship and Tournament of Champions. Now, let me just say this one last time. Pound for pound, the strongest strike ball on tour. Here he is winning the TOC against Tommy Jones at 2017. Tommy needed a mark, left the washout. EJ hosts that beautiful trophy. Well, again, you heard the huge pop for EJ Tackett. Lives about an hour and a half northeast of the center here. Where did he spend the week? <laughs> On Ronnie Russell's couch. <laughs> Not the start he wanted. I was like, couch? He's like, yeah, Tom Smallwood was there. I was like, so Smallwood got the bed. He said, no, I chose the couch. It's a comfortable couch. All right. Oof. That left foot in the gutter walked away from it immediately. Simonson starts with the strike, Tackett with a nine spare. Here's your head to head matchup. Both of them still in their 20s. 22 tour titles between them. One of them will win their third major here next. Again, the title match come your way uninterrupted here on FS1. E.J. Tackett going with a venom shock is his choice to start this championship match. But in my opinion, Rob, it's all going to come down to that right lane. And I, I think Simonson's going to try to do a couple different things. He might move right, try to go straighter. I know he's already changed bowling balls on that lane. I mean, he, he's very crafty. We saw the right lane essentially eliminate Jason Belmonte in the last match. Simonson. Almost a Brooklyn there. I just think that something drastic is going to happen on that right lane, and I don't know if it's going to be Simonson first or Tackett, but this deep inside line on that lane is not working. That lane has gotten so beat up, and it's so dry. Anthony surveying the approach area as he goes after the nine pin. Had a little hop there again and looked down. He was bothered a little bit by that approach. But he remains clean. Strike spare here to open up our title match. Thanks to Jimmy Clapper, GM of Royal Pin Entertainment, Jim Doty, over here on the left, PBA Hall of Famer. Always love coming to this facility in this town. It's a great town. Uh, Jim Doty was the GM here for many, many years. Ten drops late. That was a, a better shot. EJ still can't get it to the right side of the head pin. And uh, what lane was that on? The right lane. Yeah. Going to get it over here to the right side of that three pin, cut it into the four and seven. The ball will take out the six. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now, we have had an open frame in every one of our matches today. You know, he just over lofted it and then got it a little farther right than he wanted. There's his arsenal. Back on the strike train is Tackett. 
He'll take a seat after dropping his second strike here in the title match. So Simonson up 16, set to close out the fourth. He can max out with a 280. He had a 180 in the semifinal win over Jason Belmonte. On the right lane, which has been tricky, and he figures it out this time. Big time strike there after the open frame by Tackett. Simonson doubles up early. As we mentioned, this is his fourth U.S. Open show. His best finish second in 2020 to Jason Belmonte, the man who he just eliminated. No, three in a row now for Simonson. Extends the lead to 36. Your one seed, EJ Tackett, working off a strike here to close out the fifth. And, Rob, I think that if EJ doesn't strike on this ball, he may not win this tournament. If he opens, I guarantee you he doesn't win. Big-time shot from Tackett. He had such a huge lead through qualifying, Randy. 502 pins he led the field by, but that far from guarantees a win here at the U.S. Open. You look at these massive leads. Buttruff, Anthony, Buttruff again, Anthony again, WRWJ. What do they have in common? They all finished in second. Uh, I mean, and those guys didn't, they, they didn't exactly suck. They're pretty good players. <laughs> Little right there was Tackett. Yeah. See it right there. You know, he got the big hit on the right lane and then just overcooks this one to the right. And it never picks up. And he left himself with a tricky, tricky little spare conversion here. Look two, out. Four, eight. Eight. Cuts the two on open that one. frame. Flip on that one. Well, I, I think if Simonson strikes here on the right lane, I think it's over. Not mathematically over, but maybe mentally, physically over. That's within reach, and he's not even done with six. that ball and get it through the front. It's a 53 pin lead through six. Re-rack for Simonson, EJ Tackett, not even watching. Head buried and covered by the fan. Foot's on the neck. Time to apply a little more pressure here. Five in a row for Simonson. What a beautiful shot. Look at the rotation. You can see his finger insert spinning right there almost like it's its axis point. I cannot wait for Simonson to come up next. Do you know why? Oh, I have a feeling. It has something to do with. Tack it. Can't get it over there, can oh, you? This is, this is frustrating and depressing. I feel for you, EJ. So much energy, so much optimism. He was telling the commissioner, Tom Clark, last week, I'm winning the U.S. Open. This is mine. And, and he proved it through qualifying. Yep. Ran away with it. 
but, but it's a different animal here under the lights. Well, he's soon going to learn what it feels like to be Jacob Buttress, Jacob Buttress, Earl Anthony, and Walter Ray. Another open frame. This will be his best U.S. Open finish. He anyway. Came in fourth in 2018. He'll be in second place here in 2022. So disheartening to lead a tournament by yeah. that, that by that many pins and well, the body language on him right now, yeah. right? I, and I understand it. I get it. Two open frames in a title match. You're down 74 after seven frames. Man. I mean, just think about how well he bowled through qualifying and match play to, to lead a field like this. Made sure you didn't throw it over your left toe, didn't you? Jesus. What nice performance. Good job. This is the tough part about these solo sports and these activities. So much of it just gets dumped on you. And he's got a great supporting cast. His wife is here as well. Natalie, Mom, Angie, Dad, Ed here, but this is not the performance they, they were expecting from, as you like to say, pound for pound, the best bowler in the world, and there's the crew, and really not much they can do. All right, so as frustrating as that shot is, Randy, let's turn up the juice. We've got ourselves a PAP six-pack alert. I see it. See it right there? Yeah, if Simonson there strikes he here, he wins $1,000, sponsored by PAPS Blue Ribbon in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. Come on, Simon, get it. Oh. Ah. We're gonna add 500 bucks to the jackpot, which will keep building until someone cashes in. Dirty right lane. I wanted to crack open a PBR six pack in the worst way. He's the 2810. This is rarely, if ever, covered. That's three opens in this one game on that right lane for both players. Still in complete command. It's all but over mathematically. Well, actually, it is over. The best tack it can shoot is 175. Simonson's already at 185. Yeah. Simonson's going to get himself a nice green jacket and a beautiful trophy and $100,000. Let's give Simonson some due here. Yeah. All right, he, he knows that last year, how would you describe last season for Anthony it, Simonson? I think it was frustrating because he got there so many times and he just couldn't pull the W off, right? Remember, he uh, he he had some, some tournaments where, uh, like for example, the, the Players Championship, where he led that and then mm -hmm. when they went to the three game uh, total pin to determine uh, the step out of finals. He didn't bowl very well and was not happy. Oops. Ended up fifth and then second at the TOC. Second TOC, right. Fourth at the Cheetah in Tampa. Lost in the PBA playoffs, round of 16. So yeah, it was a frustrating year. I think, I think the frustrations got the better of him a few times last season as well. And this is a frustrating evening for EJ Tackett. He'll stay at 14 tour title wins and two majors. Finish on a good note, EJ. There we go. There's one. Lonely spot for EJ Tackett. Finishing strong here, back to back. Too little, too late. Anthony Simonson set to close out this U.S. Open. Tack it. We'll leave with three straight strikes and a 165. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, man. How are we, guys? How are the tournament, bro? Let's finish it off. That was great. Good job.
Satisfying moment of the match brought to you by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. Listen to the roar here in Indy. Anthony Simonson dropping strikes here. His last shot at the 78th U.S. Open, the title, the Eagle, the green jacket already his. to win three majors. Anthony Simonson at the age of 25 years and 31 days. Yes, wow. Major number three to Anthony Simonson. Randy's with them. Anthony, congratulations. And we got a couple guests here that are gonna present you with a beautiful green jacket and a beautiful trophy. We're gonna start with the Hall of Famer, Jim Doty. Congratulations. Congratulations, Anthony. Chad Murphy, present the 2022 U.S. Open champ with that beautiful trophy. How does it feel? Incredible. Uh, you know, I'm going to dare up. I was my mom here before the Masters. I lost my dad a few months ago. So to win another major title in this building, there's not going to be another place that holds a deeper spot in my heart than one than both. Wow. Youngest, youngest to ever win three majors by a few days over the great Dave Davis, who is a Hall of Famer. You're a shoe-in for the Hall of Fame someday, but that, that's way down the road. You've got so many more years ahead of you. What were you able to figure out on that right lane that nobody else seemed to be able to do? You know, it, uh, we had a pair throughout the week, 45 and 46, where uh, they just got really ugly really quickly. Uh, so I wanted to use a, a bigger, smoother, slower ball to kind of control the over-under that, we, that, you know, the last three guys were seeing. Uh, reps made a, you know, made a suggestion in the ninth. Uh, I was a little hesitant, but, you know, I had nothing to lose, so I made a decent shot on the right lane, three good ones on the left lane to force Belmo to throw all three. Uh, and I think that let me just get comfortable, know that I understood the pair a little bit better and was able to bowl a good game there. Hey, man, congratulations. Enjoy this win. Thank you, sir. Runner Group, Vice, Classic Products, Dexter, Bowler X, Turner Janitorial Services. Thank you, guys. None of this is possible without you. Yeah, baby! Woo! Let it out, kid. Let it out. He won the 2016 USBC Masters in the 2019 Players. This is first this, U.S. Open title. Don't forget to head to the PBA YouTube channel in just a few minutes for the PBA Post Show presented by Kia. Our next presentation, it's the PBA TOC presented by Kia. Coming your way Sunday, February 27th, 1 Eastern, live on Fox. Also streaming on the Fox Sports app. Coming your way live from Riviera Lanes in Fairlawn, Ohio. So we'll go from one historic venue to another. Anthony Simonson, the youngest yeah, to win the three majors, and he does it in front of a sellout electric crowd. Simonson getting the win, 232 to 165. He took care of Jason Belmonte in the semis by just 12, and then rolled over Tackett in the final. Coming up next on FS1 Mountain West College Hoops, Wyoming and Fresno State. More bowling coming your way later this month with the Kia TOC live on Fox. Congratulations, Anthony Simonson.